pharyngeal lymph nodes. So we're going to go to the next case. This is a 62-year-old female. She presented with difficulty swallowing, and on physical exam, she was found to have a very mild horners, little ptosis, little meiosis on the right. And when you looked into her oral cavity in the oropharynx, they saw a, a submucosal bulge on the, oh, oh, goodness, along the right lateral oropharyngeal wall. So what space is this lesion located in? Is it one, the parapharyngeal space, two, carotid space, three, masticator space, four, parotid space, or five, retropharyngeal space? I need the clock. 10 seconds, one, parapharyngeal space, two, carotid space, three, masticator space, four, carotid, four, parotid space, and five, retropharyngeal space. Very good. All right, so this is a carotid space. And just to quickly um, talk about the contents of the carotid space, carotid space is basically along the carotid sheath. It runs from skull base into the root of the neck. Its contents are the common carotid, the internal carotid, the internal jugular vein, cranial nerves 9 through 12, and the sympathetic plexus. So what happens when you get a tumor in the carotid space? Well, you know, you, because you see there's nerves um, where you can get paragangliomas, schwannomas, neurofibromas, uh, in the carotid space, if you have something arising from these nerves, you're going to see the internal carotid at the oropharynx, nasopharynx level being pushed anteriorly and the jugular vein posterolaterally, and the fat is going to be displaced anterolaterally, as in this case, tumor in the carotid space. Now the carotid's being shoved anterior medially, internal jugular vein posterolaterally, and now this normal fat is being pushed forward and out. So now we're going back to the original case. On axial T1, you can see that it's fairly well enhancing but has some areas of inhomogeneity that really pop out on the T2 weighted sequence. So what's the best diagnosis here? Is it a paraganglioma, retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy, schwannoma, neurofibroma, or benign mixed tumor of the deep lobe of the parotid? Let's start the clock. We have 10 seconds. Okay, paraganglioma, two, retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy, three, schwannoma, four, neurofibroma, or five, benign mixed tumor of the parotid gland. Wow, that's great. Very good. So schwannoma is a benign tumor of the Schwann cells. These patients, these, these uh, tumors are very asymptomatic, so they generally get very big before they are presented. Um, they're well-defined. They're ovoid. What's very important is no matter how big they get, you really don't see flovoids in it. Now, um, classically, you know, you, they're described as being homogeneously enhancing and having homogeneous echotexture. But um, if you see some heterogeneity, that's what helps you differentiate a schwannoma from a neurofibroma because neurofibromas tend to be more homogeneous. And that was the giveaway on this case. Now, schwannomas can enhance with CT contrast. Sometimes they don't enhance very well and sometimes intermediately. This one happened to not enhance very well. This is the same case, but you can still appreciate the heterogeneity. So why did I show that? Well, I want to show the corollary, the paraganglioma. It's a benign tumor of the neural crest origin. These patients are also asymptomatic. It's a slow-growing tumor. It's asymptomatic, and when they present, they're pretty big. But unlike the schwannoma, since they're so vascular, they have flovoids. You get that salt and pepper appearance. So when they're about two centimeters or greater, you can pretty much count on seeing flovoids. When they're smaller, it can be a dilemma. Because they're so vascular, they're very enhancing on CT and MRI. Here's an MRI of a carotid space um, paraganglioma, and you can see on all imaging sequences the flow voids, and I can show you here on the uh, sad, uh, coronal as well. Now, on CT, because they're so vascular, they're really, this is a different case, but it's still a paraganglioma. Look how incredibly densely enhancing this lesion is. So keep that in mind, because say you have a lesion that you're not quite sure if you see flow voids or not, it's less than two centimeters in size, you're not quite sure what to do. Sometimes if you get a CT, you'll see a very enhancing lesion, or you'll see something that's enhancing or not so enhancing, and the very enhancing lesion is more likely the paraganglioma. Okay, last case. 